My mom was only 14 when I was born. They named me Sherry. My mom told me that my dad was older than she was and my grandma wanted to put him in jail. When I was growing up, there really wasn't anyone to count on. I spent a lot of time on the streets. I started using weed when I was pretty young. I didn't go to school much. No matter who I lived with, the abuse was really bad in my family. I got put in foster care. I ran away a lot, so I didn't have any friends and I didn't have any place to go. I was taken to different hospitals. They told me I had depression, anxiety, PTSD, bipolar disorder. I was locked up too for doing things like getting into fights or using harder drugs and for running away. When I was 16, I met a guy. When I was hanging out with him, I started using heroin. I found ways I could make enough money so we could both have heroin for a couple of days. I had my first kid, then another. There were different guys after that, and the way they treated me was a lot like how I grew up. A couple of years ago, my little boy's dad and I were moving around a lot. We were homeless. We didn't have any money. Both of us had been in jail because of drugs. We went to my mom's with Thea and Mitchell. I knew it was a mistake almost right away. My mom is a user too. We got into a fight. Someone called the police. My mom really mouthed off at them. Mitchell's dad was high. I tried to clean up, but I know they saw the track marks. I was glad I had at least gotten Thea and Mitchell their favorite chocolate donuts for breakfast. A caseworker came and removed Thea and Mitchell from their family for their own safety. The children would have to go to foster care immediately, and there wasn't a home nearby. They headed about 90 minutes away to a farming community. They were going to sleep far from where they'd started their day. I was assigned by the court to advocate for Thea and Mitchell. I began by visiting them in their foster home. I made sure they got to the doctor and started seeing a therapist. Both of the children started school for the first time. We reported to the court about how things were going. It was clear that Thea and Mitchell had experienced a lot of trauma. Mitchell was hard to manage. At night, he would go looking for food. He would eat uncooked macaroni or things right out of the freezer. Thea was having tantrums. The court set up visits with her parents. Thea's father was in jail. Mitchell's father didn't show up. Sometimes, Sherry tested positive for drugs and wasn't allowed to visit the children. When she did visit, the children would be upset for days. I was learning some concerning things about the foster home placement. The foster parent kept insisting Mitchell was developmentally delayed, that he was probably autistic or had a serious mental illness. I didn't see Mitchell the same way, and neither did his therapist, his teacher, his doctor, or anyone else. This placement was having an impact on Thea, too. I told Kathleen what I'd learned. We worked with the child protection system to move Thea and Mitchell as quickly as possible. While it was painful to uproot them again, I hoped that this new foster home would help them heal from their trauma. But Thea and Mitchell weren't going to school. They were acting out a lot. I was getting increasingly concerned about the children. Would they need another foster home? I was beginning to think 
that reunification with her family was unlikely, but then it became impossible. That summer, their mother, with Mitchell's father, was included in the Cincinnati Enquirer series on heroin addiction. They were living on the streets. They were still using drugs. They had not done the things the court required from them to get their children back. They weren't going to the substance abuse treatment they'd been offered. And Thea's father remained in jail. We advocated that the court terminate the rights of all the parents. The court agreed. Now the children were eligible for adoption. Another possibility emerged, one that might end their moving around. Mitchell's grandfather, Mike, had not had much contact with the family. His wife, Judy, wasn't directly related to the children, but they wanted to adopt Thea and Mitchell. Because Mike and Judy lived in another state, different professionals got involved in the case. Only pro-kids stayed the same as the adoption process began and the children moved in with the couple. The children went back to school. They were now living in what looked like a stable home. There were lots of toys, plenty of food, and attention. But why did Mitchell continue to act out? He was suspended from kindergarten five times. He ended up in the hospital psychiatric unit after a violent episode. That day, he told me the feelings he was having all at the same time. He said he was sad, sometimes scared, excited, nervous, and frightened but he couldn't say why. Then Judy called. Mike had started drinking heavily. He'd passed out when he was home alone with the kids. Another time, Mike hit her. He threatened the dog. Judy threw him out of the house. He emptied their bank account, but she wanted to keep the kids. We weren't so sure that it would work out. I wanted the best chance for this to be the last time. Judy was not going to adopt them was there a family ready to adopt the M. Mitchell? A forever home? A place where they could thrive? Judy called again. She said she was not going to keep the children. Things moved very quickly. That same day, some of the children's things were already packed and waiting when the caseworker picked them up from school. They were again going to sleep far from where they'd started their day, far from the place they thought would be their home. And it was the last move for Thea and Mitchell. They moved into their new home and settled in quickly with their family. They began to do well at school and seldom had tantrums or acted out. I was there when their adoption was finalized in court and celebrated with Thea, Mitchell, and their parents. We want every child we serve at Pro Kids to have a safe, secure, permanent, and nurturing home. And that's exactly what happened for Thea and Mitchell.